Okay, so we're um, moving forward. Um, I, I was very fortunate to travel to the World Expo in Italy in 2014. One of the things very noticeable about their models versus, say, North American models was that I don't know the, the number as far as tanks go on the at the show there, but I would suggest there was around 400, maybe a little bit more. But here was the great thing in Italy. It was in a little town of stress, a fantastic model contest and, and a wonderful setting. But the, all the models, uh, all the models in the whole show, which was about 4,000 in total, were all on these fantastic bases. And the tanks themselves, if they were just individual tanks with no figures, they were still set in a setting. Unlike North America, where it's very common to go to a model show and and I know that space is limited and that sort of thing, but there's 200, 300 models and they're all on the table class for competition. And that's that's fine too. I mean, as I just said, space is a, at a premium, table space. And, and But one of the things that it avoids is picking up your model and running a risk of damaging. So if you can... Now, one of these two bases are purchased at... Um, different shops Ikea for this one and, and, uh, and a camera shop for this frame but you can also if you even go to a garage sales and, and, and things like that you know how the you go to a garage sale and there's a 25 cent print never mind the print it's going to be lousy but the frame might be fabulous for what we do so don't hesitate to, to, to snoop around and you can also find these types of frames at Walmart and, and that sort of thing. And these are going to be the basis for your platform for your model. They're not expensive. I mean, you can, you can go to Walmart and pick one of these frames up for under $10. You can probably get two for $10. So, but they're great. They're great for 35th scale models. So don't, um, don't panic that you don't have a, a, a saw and a miter box and all that stuff to to cut the 45 degree angles and all that. Don't worry, let Walmart or, 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 the, or the, a camera shop do it for you. And, and, it, and if you go to the higher end, you know, uh, restoration hardware or that sort of stuff, you can find fabulous frames for no more than $20. So this part of it sets your model off as well. It's, um, what, what you don't want to do is you don't want to do what they used to do in this 70s 80s even in the early 90s you just get a piece of wood and you look from a log and you cut it in half and you have this log with bark and all that sort of stuff that those days are gone you spruce your model spruce your model up with with a beautiful frame once we get through pick out our frame then we go back to home depot insulation foam uh, is what I use for my frames. Um, you can get this in the blue, you can get it in the pink, of course. But it, any construction site will have this hanging around, so it won't be hard to find you some foam. And you're going to cut that to the inside perimeter of this frame, drop that in. I'm not going to get involved in, 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 in the construction of all that because I think the people watching our video today already have that ability and let's not waste the time to to go down that road but then once you now i use the bar barbican road sets and, and uh, stone wall um, sets they're fabulous they're not very porous compared to some of the hydrocal pourings that there is on the market but having said that i still prime so i'll take the to me a fine primer and I use the fine because Barbican has got fine little details in their stones and then their wall sets that I don't want to lose so using a fine primer is important and you just blast away I'm not gonna do it here because it smells and it's but just a little bit of white primer spray it all over it's gonna take you about now, the important thing is do this the day before you're going to actually construct. Because 
the, this is this sits on your model and or rather sits on the bricks here and I like to give this oh 12 hours to dry it's a locker based primer so do it at night before you go to bed the next day you're ready to sail so that's the, to me a primer and then the colors a lot of the colors chosen to paint your road are going to be dictated by the colors of the tank and the colors of the tank are dictated of course by what theater of war they're in so we're doing a panther g very late with a chin mantlet on it so you know the isolation and where these tanks fought um, towards the end of the war in 1945 is easy to zero in on you know the, so uh, the type of roads therefore are easy to pinpoint now we're talking european roads and and some might think that they all look alike and and to north americans they probably do but um there's certain patterns in Italy on these roads that are not the same, say, Czechoslovakia or Hungary and that sort of thing. So, so choose your road pattern, and then the colors come into play. So, these roads are, are not built in the 40s. They were probably built, oh, probably just after 1920. As soon as the automobile became... Um, available to everybody but they also use these as carriage um, roads too but definitely the brick roads probably came about in the 1920s so a 20 year old road is not and especially cobblestone it's not going to be chewed up and worn out and you know it's not like it's going to be the roads that caesar's traveling on and there's you know uh that sort of stuff you know and they're they're going to be in good condition so we want to show that in the in our models too and one of the things that we're, we'll do in the end even though we're using flat paints is, is it's very smart to take a cloth cotton cloth and just rub down where all the tires would have rubbed across and if you look at any cobblestone road there's a little bit of an eggshell sheen to them so when you're finished painting and and you put your um uh powders on to fill in for the for the grout then just take a cotton cloth and rub down each side to give it a semi-gloss um a semi-gloss look it almost looks like the wet look it's not it's 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 less than that and that's just to show where the tires have constantly run and you think of how many automobiles have run across here plus the the tracks running across you're gonna get that little wear and tear on on this type of road. Um, so let's get started. I'll get painting. And once again, there's a few of these roads out there, like uh, Mini Art Make a Road. Uh, Verlinden used to make it. Verlinden's much harder to find nowadays than it was, so. Um, but Barbican is an excellent road system. And um, so stick with those. And we're on our way to paint okay so the colors for the roads are as follows I like to use XF 10 from Tamiya XF 55 62 and 63 and the majority of the color is going to be number 63 German gray and I'm gonna mix it up with now this is filthy looking lacquer thinner but it's my formula that I use when I'm mixing these colors. I use lacquer on here. It spreads nice and it evaporates quickly. So um, pay no attention to the filth of this. This is poured in from a different bottle and it's just strictly for making the road colors. So you need a good brush otherwise you'll be here all day. It's going to take me a little bit of time to paint that so I'll, I'll, I'll just paint a little bit here to give you the idea of what I'm doing. And then, um, and then we'll go in and paint individual bricks, put a little bit of Vallejo powders on it, and then away we go. Um, I'll get started. And then again, as you gentlemen have noticed with my uh, painting of the 
813 Panther tank, I you like to use a lot of thinner. So once again, I'm going to use a lot of thinner. Then I use it in a jar like this and, and a little bit in the bottom just because it gets so contaminated and filthy that you, 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 it'll become unusable when it comes to airbrushing. So I just uh, dip a little bit on. So I thin, uh, so I thin out the uh, XF sixty three, and just stipple it into the into the road. Go to my thinner, and just start painting. And you're loosey goosey here at this point. You're you're just getting the foundation down. Foundation of color. Take a little bit of 55, change up the colors of bricks a little bit. But you're gonna let you're gonna let the thinner do the work. It's gonna carry the paint. And all the little crevices and everything that these Barbican brick walls have. And it doesn't take long uh, to paint these up. It's going to take me, oh, I would suggest half an hour. And uh, we're not going to sit here for half an hour for myself to paint the whole thing. But we're going to get a good idea of what we're up to. And you can um, you can use dollar store brushes for this. I, I prefer to use a one that's not going to throw hair. So uh, I have a pretty good brush here, an artist number ten. Okay, so as you can see, we're creeping along here. Now, some guys prefer to airbrush. You're certainly going to save time with the airbrush. But I like to paint the individual bricks, and I like the flow that I get by using different colors. And I just don't want to go back and forth on my airbrush with different colors. And I just find that um, it's sort of the road is going to set a pattern depending on how I paint it um, and the colors that I choose. It sort of takes on its own characteristics, and with an airbrush, I can't do that. So. I'll just, like, here. here's the dark green. This is a XF Olive Drab, XF62. Get that in there a little bit. And it's just going to take its own course. And I don't mind using the green for sure. I mean, these roads picked up moss if they were not traveled. And, you know, things fall off of hay wagons that are vegetation from the harvest season and things like that. So don't hesitate to use... Uh, green and uh, this deck tan color and again as you guys know i'm the thinner guy i like to use a lot of thinner so look at how it spreads there so what's happening is this road is taking on its own characteristic and like i say airbrushing this job is fabulous and i would probably suggest that 75 percent of the guys are going to airbrush the stones it's just not a go-to uh, process for myself. And then once you think you've nailed all the crevices and everything, turn your road around to catch the other side of the bricks. You see, I've missed a few here. And you have to go back in.
and then just work your way up the model and there's your road and then you know don't hesitate to put a little bit more deck tan in there you can just shine that right up and hit it with some thinner don't worry that I've spoiled it I haven't spoiled it see so now you have a whole series of different colored bricks a little bit of green on top of that As you can see, it's all softened out. Now, once you get it all painted, now you want to pick out individual bricks in a whole line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take XF10, the flat brown color, and I'm going to switch paint brushes here, and I'm going to nail some individual bricks. Now these pencil, uh, these uh, paintbrush holders I have are 25 millimeter shell casings, probably from a, a lab or a, possibly a Bradley, I'm not sure. They're just uh, practice shells from the range, but the beautiful thing is they don't tip over. They're excellent, excellent paintbrush holders. So don't hesitate to pick up some of these things for your paintbrushes. So a little bit of thinner and then just randomly pick out bricks Now we're going to harmonize them back into the road shortly, so don't ha don't think for one minute that these are suddenly uh, the end of the practice here. We're going to uh, add a little bit of thinner and a little bit of our gray and our deck tan and go right over top of the red and once again add character again. And then in the end we're going to put some powders on them, individual powders and it'll all harmonize together and then you can use a little bit of Tamiya flesh if you want add it to the brick color that'll add a nice um, thing but we'll talk about the adding flesh to it when we're doing the stone wall So we take a little bit of deck tan, lots of thinner. Give it a wash all over. Now the red bricks that were sort of dotting our roadway there, now they just blend in. You can barely see them. And this is just a sort of a highlight motion. So now they're not individual at all. They just blend into the whole mosaic of what we're doing here. So then you just creep your way all the way up the road. And then now we're going to switch to doing the, the Vallejo powders on it. Um, now there's there's other companies, as I've mentioned before. You can use MIG powders. You can use uh, Humbrol. Whatever you have at your... Certainly don't go out and buy Vallejo brick powder or something you, you probably got it something close in your inventory so don't run off and slow down the job because you might not have the product so I will get the product okay so I my choice of powder for doing the roads is gonna be um, Vallejo 73104 
Um, and it's and it's the nice thing about this. Back to the word harmonizing. This is also the color that we were weathering the the tank with. You know, portions of the tank at the back end. So um, you have to certainly choose a color that's very similar or exact color that's already on the tank so that they're going to marriage beautifully in the end so our little scene in the end which is coming up in a few episodes um it's all going to blend perfectly so by and it's all by choice of using the same colors and i just dabble it everywhere and use you know, when you purchase these powders, the beautiful thing is you buy them once, you don't have to buy them ever again. And I'm gonna cake this on pretty good. But yet, I have a lifetime supply in this little jar here. So even though they're expensive out of the hopper when you're buying, you know, three or four of them at once, um, you'll never have to buy them again. So don't hesitate to lather this on. And this is why when you're painting it, you don't have to worry about being exact and, and being like the YouTube channel, the guy on uh, the YouTube channel. Because you, you can see that you're gonna take on your own pattern and your own script for doing this. So these are just little helpful hints and, and, and showing you how to apply them. As you can see, there's no science here. Now, one of the things you do next is you, in the, in the direction of tires, and this is important to do this, is now you're going to press it in down into the cracks and crevices of your road. Because the, the rubber tires are going to pick up and as you can see, it's all come together. And then those uh, bricks that I painted with the uh, with the uh, XF10, they're almost invisible now, but um, but you can still see them. They're dotted here and there on the on the thing, but they simply blend right in. Even though I was using a a reddish tone on our bricks, and if you've uh, and if you put too many red bricks down or too many bricks that you don't like, simply just get out a paintbrush and dab in a new color and, and paint right over top. Now, the next step is a step we use to the pigment fixer. And um, I'll go over the pigment fixer in a minute. Once once I get the, the wall, because I'm going to demonstrate painting the Barbican wall in a second which is a set of new colors. And then after that, we'll put the fixer on to hold these pigments where they, and all I'm gonna do is, is what I've done in the previous videos with you guys is just take that X20, the Tamiya X20 paint thinner, and just drop it close by with an eyedropper. But you can see our roads coming together. And like I say, the process is gonna take half an hour that's not a lot of time when it comes to hobby time. It's 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 part of the part of our makeup. That's why we work. So we have time to do this. <laughs> so okay, so we're gonna we're gonna find our inspiration where we're gonna find it. Whether it's in a, a travel traveling brochure to Italy or a, a picture from a, a cover of a magazine. But this is by Pete Usher. This is a great diorama. And look at the look at the eyes on the soldiers. You know, obviously there's a phantom flying over and what have you, but look at the wall in the background. You know, there's 15 colors in that wall. And then he's and then he's done this fantastic thing with the sign. So those are the great things that we have to look for and try to achieve. So I'm just going to open it up to the wall. There's a there's a brief section. Um, Thing on the wall here so um, and as you can see I was talking about all the colors in the wall so if you pick up the uh, this magazine and you can see the tightness of the tank on the base 
certainly doesn't leave a lot of space and that's what you want to achieve so there's not a lot of negative space going on in this diorama and he's painted this straight asphalt and he's he's done a fantastic job and his choice of colors off the wall and off the road are certainly blended amongst his tank as well his m48 is all harmonized in the diorama so you have to study pictures like this um you, you just can't go it alone you're gonna you're gonna have to come up with a game plan and in our case we're certainly using the colors in our wall and in our in our road here that we've used all along in the video to paint the tank so that when they're all clashing together there's no clash they they harmonize together so anyway so yeah don't hesitate to even though this is an M48 in Vietnam, don't hesitate to apply it. Same rules to 1945. It's it's uh, it's what you must do. And what's so eye-catching about this diorama, I think, is is the Seven Up pop bottle. It's just a fantastic thing. And I hope that Pete goes on a little more in, in a future article about how he did the sign because it's certainly a fantastic um, part of the diorama. And all the soldiers looking up at the F Phantoms and the and stuff like that. It's a it's a very good diorama. All right, so now we're gonna paint some stones and some uh, rather a brick wall. Now the colors used again are gonna be Tamiya, but certainly Vallejo has some fantastic um, colors for this too. In their war gaming series, they have all kinds of funny colors and. Um, so don't hesitate to get off to me and hop into the game colors that Vallejo has because there definitely is a great couple of brick colors for um, doing what we're about to do. And the railroad guys, don't hesitate to go to your local hobby shop and look at the railroad um, uh, stone wall colors that they're going to use. So... Um, we're all going to help each other. Don't hesitate to pick up a modeling magazine on uh, on trains to find how they paint their buildings. Because the, the model railroaders, model railroaders have been doing it a lot longer than we have. So they have their they have great ways of achieving what we're going to achieve as well. So anyway, I will get the proper colors and um, and we'll carry on. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of uh, brick, brick wall. Now, I, I love, to me, is flesh color XF15. Uh, it's one of my go-to colors on a lot of things I do. Uh, as you guys know, um, uh, some of the colors to soften, um, I always go to the flesh, so. And it just takes the harshness out of the XF9, that hull red. So I just, uh, dabble it on. And you can go straight on with the flesh, it doesn't matter. These are just foundation colors for blending so now as you guys know these are acrylic paints so they dry quick so keeping your brush damp with a little bit of lacquer thinner and you can use XF20 I just find that using the using the lacquer just suits me a little better And keep your palette small, because if not, you're going to have to reflect on, you know, you, you, you do a nice job on your wall set, and, and you've moved on to a new diorama, and you really like the wall that you did four months earlier, and you don't have a clue how you painted it. So keep the palette small, and, and make yourself some proper notes so that you can reflect, you know, just, just on the 
simple notes written on the lid of the box of the Panther about the wall itself is a is a great place to do that sort of thing because you're not gonna you're not gonna lose the box it's big <laughs> you know if you do it on a little piece of full scap or a, you know the other thing just jot it into your computer you know as a reference for later if you like the colors you used but that's one of the reasons I use such a small palette is because uh, I don't it does it's not gonna take much to reflect back on what I might have painted these bricks walls with uh, come Easter time or you know when I'm on my next project and I want to add another Barbican wall to my to a different project And the nice thing about the barbican walls is that they're double-sided. There's no flat. You know, the, these still are all uh, all the way around. There's not a a flat side that you have to sort of sculpt your own bricks into. These are uh, these are really excellent for dioramas. The other the other great guy who's doing this is Armin Biardi. They're resin. But they also take the paint really well. You might want to prime them first. But Armin Bayardi has been doing it, oh, at least 30 years. And his things are excellent as well. And, and it's already multiples. You can assemble walls, you know, with about three or four different sets that he has. So an excellent little... And Armin Bayardi, uh has also got cups and saucers and uh, knickknacks for 35th scale armor that you know he's he's got about a hundred little pieces in his um, in his company that are excellent for 35th scale and, he, and he's doing other scales too he's doing larger scales and but they paint up beautifully so don't hesitate to look up Armand by Artie for his things Okay, so the next step after it's um, painted is we're gonna take the Vallejo color again. And again, try and stick to the same colors if you can. Now obviously, down at the bottom here, it's gonna be heavily dusted. You look at any building that's near a road, the bottom here is gonna be always dusted for obvious reasons. Now to apply the powders, you're going to need a, a, a probably a number five for this, a number five brush, and it, and it, it, it just helps the process go along. And as you work up the body, just use less and less powders. You have to put powders on, yes, correct, but not as much. You want it definitely to be a, a line in the sand as far as being, you know, the first foot or so, scale foot. Um, dustier than the bottom foot. So then just press it in with your thumb and I'm leaving the, remember, I'm leaving the first four or five rows um, untouched with my thumb. that yet and just push it in with your thumb get the corner for sure that'll be where the old drunk leans against the wall you got to shine that up Now 
And as you can see, it's coming together. And I'm not going to put my thumb against any of this brickwork here. It's just up here that I use my thumb to grind it into the cracks and crevices of the bricks. And then just go around the whole structure like that, the whole uh, thing. Give it a couple little taps. And there you are. She's pretty much done. Now you can paint graffiti on it if you want. Put a little poster on it. Um, add a little color. Um, you can individually pick out some bricks if you want. You know, with a little bit of flesh tone and some some of your uh, XF9. Um, but... Um, but in general, she's done, other than painting the cap. And the only reason I haven't done that yet is because, number one, I want to hang on to it. it, it it's strong enough for me to use this as a uh, as a holder. So, But what I'll do is I'll hand paint that momentarily. And that's it for painting the bricks. Okay, so we're just about finished here. I'd just like to talk about our next episode. I'm going to uh, paint the sidewalks, maybe put a little bit of vegetation in between the nice cracks. Yeah, these are the Barbican sidewalks and um, excellent, excellent uh, products. So I look forward to seeing you next episode. Thank you so much.